Hello, my name is Erin Shea and I'm reporting for Anchor TV. Today I'm talking about the upcoming season for the gymnastics team. I'm a freshman on the Rhode Island College gymnastics team and ever since its cancellation and heartfelt reinstatement six years ago, the gymnastics team has worked hard to improve every year. This 2014-2015 season is no exception to that rule and this season is looking bright for all the athletes. Assistant coach Nicole Tomaselli stated that she is very excited to see the combination of seasoned veterans as well as the raw talent from the freshmen. The anchor women have made large strides in the last few years and this upcoming season is looking to be the most successful. Bob, co head coach Bob Nanning also had something to say about the season. Coach Bob Nanning stated that this season is looking to be the best one yet and he made a note of that the most improvement can be seen on the uneven bars. Bob also noted that the large freshman class is vital is playing a vital role in improving the team overall. Um, as Bob stated, the, most, the biggest improvement is on bars, and big bar routines can be seen from freshman Victoria Costello, freshman Samantha Lemire, and freshman Courtney Osborne, as well as sophomores Emily Murphy and Jackie Hahn. Um, on bars, you can see skills such as Jaegers, double backs, overshoots, hiccups, and if you don't know what these are, don't worry. You can see them at meets. Uh, bars is not just about big skills, however. Bars is full of beautiful lines and pointed toes to create a cohesive routine shown by all the athletes. Um, next, I want to talk about BEAM, which is uh, an event that has always been a struggle for the Rick gymnasts. But this year, shown by athletes uh, Emily Murphy and Samantha Lemire, the Rook team can have large skills such as hamstring back layouts on beam and a handful of other gymnasts throw back hamstring back tucks. Beam is full of front handsprings, standing back tucks, side aerials, full and a half off the end, and yes, all this is done on a four inch piece of wood. Now, when thinking about beam, it's important to remember that beam has a lot of attributes such as dance and jumps and leaps all in combination which has been a weakness of the team. But however, this year, there's been a focus on dancing and jumps and the routines look cohesive and it's a big upgrade for the team. Next, I wanna talk about vault, which has always been a solid event for Rick, but this year it's looking to be a powerhouse. With Uchenkos and Sugaharas and front fronts, which are all vaults um, at the level 10 competition level, uh, Rick is looking to be uh, really, really strong on bars. So the girls who compete bars, the I mean vault, the six of them uh, are going to represent Rick and ho hopefully uh, be a successful event. And lastly, floor is one of the most improved event, most improved events because the floor music has gotten uh, more contemporary as well as. Um, the passes are getting better and tighter and girls on floor are throwing double backs and two and a half twists and front layouts and the Rick gymnasts will punch a front out of anything and keep their hands up while doing it, according to Coach Tomaselli. Floor has been an exciting event to watch and some floor exercises to watch would be by Victoria Costello, uh, Emma Harton, Jackie Hahn, Emily Murphy, Courtney, o Courtney Osborne, Sammy Lemire, and Megan French and many more. So floor is one of those events that you can have a large amount of gymnasts on and that's another reason why the team is thriving this year is because of its depth. With 18 girls strong it's looking that there are going to be more people who can go on more events so injuries are not going to be as big of a factor as they were in past years because somebody who gets injured can be easily replaced by another teammate. Overall the team is looking decent and a lot better than when they started off and on all four events they look to have improved. And this can partially be because of the experience of the seasoned veterans and because of the new talent coming in with the freshmen. So please, everyone, come see the annual inter-squad meet on December 12th. And for more information, go to GoAnchorMan.com. And here's to wishing the gymnastics team a successful season. In other news, I attended President Obama's address on October 31st in the Murray Center. Um, he delivered an address concerning women's opportunities in the American economy. President Obama spoke about paid leave for women and children and cited important small and large business owners in Rhode Island. It was amazing to hear him speak because he seemed as if he really cared and he was genuine about the issues. 
uh, his policies included women and men getting maternity and paternity leave for work. And he was hoping that um, through his, he was, he was speaking about getting more flexible schedules for men and women across the nation to deal with family issues and personal issues. And he thought that this would inspire workers to do a better job. President Obama uh, was overall one of the best public speakers I've ever heard, and his speech impressed a lot of people because of how personable and involved he seemed during the speech. This was truly an amazing experience for me, and I'm sure for everyone else in the Murray Center. I could not believe that the President of the United States chose Rick of all places to attend because of all the amazing Ivy League schools around us, such as Brown. But he was here, and he was 100 feet away from me, which was something I will never get to live again. Um, I almost forgot to take pictures. I was so enraptured by the experience. But um, I was incredibly enthralled by it. And overall, the topic of female empowerment was interesting to me, and the speech persuaded me, as well as my audience, because of how well organized and articulate President Obama was. I will never forget my experience on October 31st and, having, and being given the opportunity to hear the nation's top speaker give an address. Hello, this is Anchor TV. I'm Laura Howard here with Jarrell James. Um, we're going to be giving you guys a few quick news stories here. Um, first on the list, the otaku cosplay dance party. Um, I know I was there. I helped out a little bit. Uh, were you there, Jarrell? I don't recall seeing your face there. Actually, no, I wasn't. You I had things not. to do because um, I couldn't dance with them because their, cos their like, costumes was too much for me. So. The costumes were too much. Yeah. Well, that's pretty unfortunate. It took place on Thursday, uh, November 13th. WXN was, uh, WXIN was there. Uh, they were DJing. Um, T. Dollar sign. Yep. <laughs> um, it went from about 6 till about 10.30 at night, and um, there were several, several events. I know they did um, a few dances like uh, the Cotton Eye Joe and Cha Cha Slide and stuff. There was a costume contest. Um, Harrison Brawley from the Super Adequate Cosplay Society won the costume contest, dressed as Hiccup from How to Train Your Dragon, and let me just say, personally, from seeing him, his costume was amazing. It took him, I think he said, 10 months of work to do that costume. I know, I know, um, but it was, it was pretty cool. Um, aside from that, it was a pretty cool event. Um, I know they made a decent amount of money. I'm not exactly sure how many tickets they sold, but they did pretty good, and it picked up a lot towards the end. Uh, what was the dances they were doing? Let's see, uh, they did the Cotton Eye Joe at one point, uh, the Cha Cha Slide, Gangnam Style. Um, hmm, I think that's all I was physically there so for. So, how did you feel watching all those uh, guys in costumes just <laughs> having a gay old time? Um, well, they certainly were having a uh, gay old time, as you said, Jarrell. Uh, they had a, they were, uh, like I said, at first it was a little awkward, but, um, a little slow, but as the night went on, things picked up. As the dances, you know, the Cotton Eye Joe and everything that people um, usually know, everyone rushes onto the dance floor, and then once people are on the dance floor, it's pretty easy to keep them on there. So WXIN did a pretty good job DJing there, uh, keeping people on the dance floor and stuff. Shout out to T-Dollar Sign. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a pretty good event this week. Um, let's see, there was also... A possible report um, that I heard through Yik Yak, which, I mean, let's face it, it's not the most reliable news source out there, but there were several posts on it about a streaker uh, running through campus. Um, I don't know the gender. I was not there to see it, thankfully. Um, but there were, se there were several posts. Um, I know the anchor is trying to get people um, that saw the report, um, or saw the um, streaker, rather, to send them... Um, any information, uh, you know, gender, uh, anything. So keep your eyes out um, for the streaker on campus or don't, probably you know. Not. Probably not. <laughs> probably not. Um, no one was caught, so <laughs> he or she is still out there, find possibly. The, find the gold streaker. Yeah. Is there a reward? <laughs> okay, there's not a reward. Anyway. Um, there will be a town hall meeting this week on the 20th of November at 7 o'clock in the Willard Rec Room. They will be talking about problems with dorm life. Um, anyone is welcome to go. Um, I would highly suggest it. Um, I know there are a lot of problems out there that a lot of students face um, living on the dorms. So I would highly suggest that all of you watching this attend the town hall meeting at the Willard Rec Room on the 20th at 7 o'clock. 
Um, my final story for tonight um, is entitled Spoon Fiasco. So there was a student um, that I had that had texted me about um, Donovan. She was in Donovan and she was leaving and she was grabbing some silverware. Um, you know, she had soup, she grabbed a couple extra spoons and administration from Donovan approached her and asked her what she was doing with these extra spoons and how dare she have all these extra spoons and uh, how expensive it was for them to get plastic silverware. Um, during the incident, administration stated that they were trying to implement a new policy that would only allow students to take one set of utensils um, after they purchased a meal, which, I mean... This is the dumbest thing you've ever heard because they take... You know what? Actually, I'm not going to get into that. It was very <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> I, too, believe that this is um, ridiculous. I mean, I, I do agree with Donovan, um, with administration, in that there are a lot of students going to Donovan um, filling bags up with um, spoons and knives and napkins. However, I disagree with administration. You do? Yes, I do. Because you got to remember, when you miss a breakfast, that is $6 that you will never, ever get back. You got to make up for it in utensils. Okay, well. I'd steal $6 worth of spoons and I'd do it again. I think that's a valid point. I completely agree with you. Um, there are plenty of students at this campus that miss um, meal plans every single day. Um, and I just think that to um, kind of chastise a student for taking um, an extra spoon here or there is quite frankly ridiculous. We pay enough at this school to take quite frankly, a thousand spoons um, to cover our tuition. So that was just something that uh, bothered me just a little bit. Once again, I'm Laura Howard. And this is Darrell James, and I will be here while Miss Howard leaves us. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Mike Giamarco alongside Darrell James. I'm back. Can't get rid of me. And we're here for a little sports report. Rhode Island College Anchorman basketball started up this week. Uh, away against Brockport with a 72-62 win. Chris Burton, senior from Rick, leading the way with 21 points and 13 rebounds. Rhode Island College Hockey lost to Sacred Heart by a score of 12-5. to Jarrell, give me your take on that game, first of all. Well, first of all, that game was highly competitive. A lot of physical. like Very phys physical. Very physical. Like Right at the beginning, they were like, slamming and taking shots at each other. And that penalty box filled up. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Second period, actually, we was coming in the lead. Second period, we was what? We did. We had the lead 2-1 going into the second. 2-1 going into the second. And within the first two minutes, Sacred Heart scored. Scored twice. Twice. Within, I believe, a minute and a half. Within a minute and a half, but we kept strong. We ended up being down 5-3. to three at the 4 3 4-3. 4, three. Four, three. Four, four three at the end of the second period. Going into the third period, that's when the beating started. And... When I say beating, I'm, I'm taking it lightly, like, because right at the beginning, they dropped three points on us. We imploded. We imploded. Like, the penalty box was full. Two people from Sacred Heart got expelled from the game, and we, they just started beating us up again. Senior goalie Vinny Tadino gets pulled after, I believe, what, letting up, what, eight goals? Yeah, they, after, after the game was out of reach, they took the, goal, they took the goalie out, just... Shut him down brought in the backup Pachenko, who also led up four. Ended up losing 12-5. We ended up getting one back, two back in that period, but it wasn't enough. Uh, then Sacred Hearts number 15 had, he had a hat trick. He had at least three goals on us, right, all right from point, slap shot every time. Yeah. He'd, admit, he'd hit him, they just hit him in that, uh, in that zone every time, right at the point, top corner every time on him. And just couldn't stop him. And last week... Another, it was a great game actually. Three great periods of hockey uh, against, who was it, Westfield State. Mm -hmm. And we just ended up losing 4 3 in a shootout loss. And we, it was a great played game. Uh, they had the puck in the offensive zone most of the time. Our scoring opportunities were little to none through the first couple periods. Last period, we tied it up. And we had a 2 0 lead, I believe. And then they just took the lead 3 2. And we, then we scored from center ice, which is very rare, and went through overtime and just lost in a shootout. All right, so what would you say is the reason why, like, we couldn't take the game from them? Like, we couldn't win. Is this? The, the first game, you already know why. Sacred Heart, yeah. We, 
Well, that we imploded. Yeah, we got like manhandled, destroyed. But anyway, the second game. Second game. You know, it was it, it was a shootout. So, I mean, I think that's a pretty cheap way to end it, anyways. I mean, that's anything, personally, but is there anything they could have did differently? Yes, uh, they got a Westfield was on top of every single pass we made. Every pass got deflected, went back into their zone, and there's nothing you can do about that. When you got a defense, defense wins championships. When you got a defense who just who's on top of you like that, it's unstoppable. Well, I know in the first game there were more penalties than anything. Oh yeah. How was it in the second game? Because second game was also uh, there was a fair share of penalties. Not as many cheap shots were taken. It was more respectful game. Uh, I think in Westfield they handled their penalties better too. Hmm. And this Friday night, uh, puck drops at eight ten. Rival game against Roger Williams. Let's we'll see if we can get a victory. We'll okay. get the W. For Mike Giamarco, Jarrell James, 